So about a month ago, I reviewed the Lieco Li Max 2, and that was an astounding device for the price because you've got a Snapdragon 820, 3 gigabytes of RAM, and a 1440p screen with a Sony 21 megapixel camera for only 230 US. Well, this now is the successor, the Li Pro 3, and it has a faster chipset, which is a Snapdragon 821, 4 to 6 gigabytes of RAM, 32 to 128 gigabytes of internal storage. It has a larger battery now, which is 4,070 milliamp hours, a 16 megapixel rear camera, it still has the same hardware for the fingerprint reader, and it also retains those deal breakers, which was no micro SD card support and no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And it still has, you can see, those ugly black borders around the screen. So I'm going to have a look at it now in greater detail and see if it's worth the upgrade over the Li Max 2 or not. Now at the front of the Li Pro 3, we have a 1080p screen now that has been downgraded from 1440p from the Li Max 2. Same 8 megapixel front facing camera. The earpiece now contains within that a second loudspeaker. That's good. So we have a front facing speaker, ambient light sensor and proximity sensor in there. Down the bottom we have those hardware navigation keys. They are backlit and now there's a Li Echo logo there. On the rear, the fingerprint reader, dual tone LED flash, the new f2.0 16 megapixel camera, Li Echo logo, and the antenna lines there. On the left side, you'll find the dual nano SIM tray. And as mentioned, there's no micro SD card support, which is a real shame, and that's going to be a deal breaker for some people. On the right hand side, metal volume up and down, and power on button. Now, unlike the Li Max 2, I had a bit of a problem with the volume button. It just used to rattle a little bit. I can confirm that this isn't happening now on the Li Pro 3. USB Type-C port, loudspeaker, and microphone. And lastly, on the top of the Li Pro 3, there is the IR Blaster secondary microphone, and we are missing a 3.5mm headphone jack. You have to use the included Type-C to 3.5 adapter. In terms of build quality, it feels great. It feels every bit the premium device. There's no flex in the design. It's all metal, the unibody rear on it. Okay, we have those antenna lines and we do have the ugly bezels as mentioned in the start of the video, but it's very well put together. Feels 100% premium and I have no complaints now. The fact that the volume rocker doesn't make any more rattling noises. Now the new 1080p screen is bright, but it's not quite as bright as the 1440p panel that was used in the Li Max 2. Outdoors you will find that you'll struggle a little bit trying to read what's on the screen. Indoors it's perfectly fine. At the moment with these cloudy conditions you can see the screen looks bright, but I still think it needs to be a couple of notches brighter. So in my unboxing I rushed things a little bit when it came to the fingerprint reader, but I can confirm that it does work really well. And it unlocks literally 9 out of 10 times. I haven't had any problems with it. It's fast, you don't need to wake the device to unlock it. Simply place your finger on there that you have scanned and it unlocks straight away. Really good. So Li Pro 3 is running Android 6.0.1 and it has a custom skin on there that is called EUI. And EUI 5.8 is of course from Li Echo and they've got a slight few tweaks and things. So your toggles and your recent apps are all from the recent apps button, you no longer swipe down. Swiping down from the top, that is only for notifications, so it takes a little while to get used to. And the operating system itself isn't too bad. RAM management can be a little bit aggressive. It does tend to kill things off in the background, and I struggle to run the PC Mark benchmark because it would always kill it off and not actually let it finish its test. Performance of it in general seems okay. I have noticed that now and then some of the animations, as you might see then, sometimes they can be a little bit sluggy, a little tiny micro starter here and there from them. But overall performance is good, things launch really quick and as you'll see in my speed comparison against the Mi 5S Plus that it doesn't actually do too bad. So to quickly run through the benchmarks I like to run on my Android devices. First up is the Geekbench 4 score. Here is the And22 6.2.1 score. Quite a good score there. I don't actually think I've seen any higher. This is probably one of the highest scores I have seen. The internal memory speed, so it has a UFS 2.0 spec, 32 gigabytes of this version here, with 460 reads and 176 writes. So that is actually very fast. And here are the wireless speeds, I was testing that out, as well as the wireless range. Now speaking of the wireless range, quite good. This is on the same floor as my wireless router. 
I then went downstairs, the signal drops a little bit, but it's actually not bad at all and better than some other cheaper mobiles I have tested out. Now the battery life on this is really, really good. So here are my little tests that I did, my own personal test. I set the screen to 200 nits of brightness and proceeded to deplete the battery life by playing some GT Racing, Chrome and YouTube. Now have a look at the time on I got, so 11 hours of screen on time was the main consumer. Had uh, wireless on, the screen on the whole time using a program, an application, just to keep the screen on, disable that wake lock, just to keep it on the whole time. And you see that GT Racing 2 was used for one hour. Chrome used for an hour and 20 minutes. And YouTube for one hour and five minutes. So I was using it as much as possible during that time and I can easily make about three hours with my own personal use from the Lee Pro 3 here. So battery life is, for me, phenomenal for a Snapdragon 821. So what about GPS? That's something that's often overlooked and I personally like to use Sync and Google Maps to drive around town and when I need to go on trips and things, I always use GPS on my devices. So let's have a look and see how long it takes to get a lock where I currently am. It did not take long at all and I have actually used this driving around in my car and it doesn't lose the lock whatsoever. So GPS performance from the Snapdragon 821 and the optimization that Lieco have done, it's, it's working just fine. The antenna reception also fine there. You can see very strong signal there of some of the satellites. So just how is gaming performance on the Lee Pro 3? Well, it's actually really good because it's only running a 1080p screen and that is a lot easier and less demanding for the Adreno 530 graphics. So it is one of the fastest GPUs you can get on Android at the moment. As you're looking around there, the frame rate is really good. I have noticed that there's occasional stutter here and there, but you, you get that really literally on every single device. You might have seen that just then. There was a tiny little pause with the explosion. And that happens everywhere. So gaming performance is very smooth and fluid. You won't have any problems with all of the latest games and the most demanding games. So what about audio quality? So to use your headset, you're going to have to use and carry around the Type-C to 3.5mm adapter. Plug that into the bottom and that is actually a real pain. But I can confirm that the quality that comes out of it is exceptional. It's really quite good and you can get really high volumes on it as well. Very clean audio. I'm very happy with that. And when it comes to call quality audio, also nice and clean. Good reception there. And the microphone seems to pick up a lot of noise there. It does remove some of the background noise. So let's have a listen to how the loudspeaker sounds. We've got one loudspeaker down here on the bottom and actually one right next to the earpiece. Now a quick look at the stock camera application. Tap to focus, shutter rate does seem quite quick and these lighting conditions it is very quick almost instant there and if I move over now and have a quick look at the settings we have we can control the white balance, ISO, contrast, exposure, picture size goes up to 16 megapixels, 4x3 aspect ratio, unfortunately not a 69 sensor which would be better because that would have suited the 1080p screen of course being also 16x9. So there's a few other options in here you get. You've got scenes, scene modes, nighttime, HDR. Moving over to the video mode, you can shoot right up to 4K video. No options there for the focus mode, and that is really it. So I'm gonna quickly show you now some video samples from the front and rear cameras, as well as some stills in good and low lighting conditions. So a 16 megapixel rear camera with f2.0 aperture can record up to 4K. Now it does have phase detection autofocus, the sensor, but for some reason there is no autofocus in video mode. And the bitrate in video mode is around 40 megabits per second. The audio was quite low, that is only 95 kilobytes per second. And if you want to focus you have to use tap to focus. There's also no 
optical image stabilization or digital image stabilization. So you need to hold it really still, otherwise videos are going to be quite shaky. So I'll just focus on the graffiti there and down at the shore. So overall their video quality is quite good. It's not the worst I have seen. I do believe it's a slight improvement from the Lee Max 2. In terms of compression artifacts and video, you don't see as many as that model. So the front facing camera is the same as the Lee Max 2. It has an 8 megapixel camera with an f2.0 aperture, same aperture as the rear camera. And the quality of it, as you can see at the moment, doesn't look too bad. And the exposure seems to do a reasonably good job of adjusting to the lighting conditions here. You do, of course, need to hold it really still. There's no digital image stabilization on this front facing camera or the rear one too. 4K low light sample now. Notice there's a lot more grain to the image now. And finally, a low light video sample from the front facing camera as well. It has brightened things up a lot more than what it really is here because it's actually a lot darker. But on camera, for some reason, the audio exposure has really pumped up the brightness there. You can see there's a bit of a grain to it, but it's not doing too bad. And the frame rate seems to be all right so far. So if you can get past those deal breakers like having no micro SD card support or a 3.5mm headphone jack, you've got yourself a very solid decent phone, performs really well, one of the highest and 2-2 scores but benchmarks aren't everything. There is the occasional slight little stutter in EUI, I'm not really too sure why, it could be the fact that it just needed a few more updates from Lieco. And the performance of the battery is really, really good. This has a top battery life, I believe, for a Snapdragon 821 device. And the camera quality, well, it's okay. It does suffer a little with low light performance. And the video quality isn't that of other flagships because it doesn't have any optical image stabilization. So should Lee Max 2 owners or people looking at the Lee Max 2 and the Lee Pro 3 here, which one should you get? Well, I would say save 100 bucks and go for the Lee Max 2. Thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you like it. And if you haven't already won it, think about subscribing to the channel. And hopefully I will see you back with some more up and coming reviews. Bye for now.